Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers. I am Claudia Mondlui. Thank you for joining us. Our topic is based on St. Lucia's imminent migration to the e-passport system. And with me to enlighten us on this project is Mr. Lucius Lake of the St. Lucia Border Control Agency and an immigration expert, along with project manager with Canadian Banknote Limited, Mr. Kathleen Tudor, who is on island providing support to this project. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Definitely a hot topic is St. Lucia's introduction or migration to the e-passport system. The e-passport is a document which has been around in, in as far back as perhaps the 90s for some countries, but the region is just coming on board. And definitely in St. Lucia we are new to it, so I would like to kick off our discussion by asking what is an e-passport and what gives the e-passport the edge as a more secure document. Kathleen? So actually the e-passport was first introduced in 2005. Uh, but the e-passport uh, is the next generation of travel document and has many advantages as well as benefits for the bearer of the document. So um, it's adding a compliant uh, uh, microchip and it will strengthen the security value uh, offered by the, by the passport. Uh, in turn, uh, the e-passport can reduce uh, the risk uh, of other countries imposing uh, uh, visa requirements on travelers. It can be also used in uh, e-gates where the technology uh, and programs exist. So in uh, selected cases, states uh, uh, are obliged or motivated to introduce the e-passports due to uh, some uh, bilateral and multilateral agreements, such as uh, US visa waiver program, and uh, there are some comparable uh, agreements in the EU. So it should be noted uh, that some of these programs have expanded since the introduction of uh, e-passports, so owning in part the secure nature of the document and the risk assessment performed uh, on any country by country basics. Uh, so with uh, the introduction, uh, introduction of e-passports, uh, a St. Lucian uh, citizen traveling to EU may benefit greatly given that EU, EU has agreed to extend their visa exam program to include a, num a number of Caribbean uh, nations. Sounds, sounds good. Thanks for that comprehensive introduction. Mr. Lake, can you give us some background to the, into the machine-readable passports? which was introduced here at about 2005. Yes, 2005 there about St. Lucia moved in from the handwritten passport to the machine readable passport. And that was all championed by Canadian Bank Note. There have been numerous upgrades where that system is concerned. At this point in time, we have had as many upgrades as the system permits. The same way one would have Windows XP, which is now extinct. We had to move forward. Canadian Banknote has been a partner who we have worked with. They can, they can no longer support the issuance or production or printing of the machine-readable passports we have now. So the gradual move of progression is into the new e-passport, which is what Kathleen spoke about. We are one of 136 countries worldwide who have moved on into the e-passport. It's not just a new loan. We have um, our brothers and sisters, Antigua and Barbuda, Bahamas, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Grenada, um, St. Kitts and Nevis. Belize should be coming on sometime this year, and Jamaica sometime in 2023. So we are the latest kids in the block. We have all the latest technology, mm -hmm. where it put into e-passports, come into St. Lucia. That is where we are right now. Okay. Let us unpack um, Catalan terms like microchip and biodata and biometric so that all citizens can actually understand what that means. Okay. So basically e-passports reduce uh, the risk of tampering and identity fraud by adding a digital record 
uh, of the information contained on the printing uh, area on the microchip. So for an e-passport to be considered genuine and unalterated, the microchip data must be uh, uh, the printed data. So also the biological information uh, uh, is specific to the data loaded in the, the microchip and cannot be tempered with it, edited or modified once programmed. So once the, the passport is uh, printed, also the data in the same time, it gets embedded to the microchip and after that the microchip will be closed so nobody can uh, edit it uh, afterwards. So it can be only uh, read. So when you are going to, to a border management system, it will uh, read the, the data from the page, like it, it did with the old passports, and also it will read the data from the chip, and they will compare the data to be similar. So if the chip will, is altered, uh, it, will not, uh, it will not work. What the, the, uh, the, the, the chip has, and it's a new thing, it's a certificate that's generated by the government of St. Lucia. So it's a certificate only generated by the government of St. Lucia, and it will be read and acknowledged in the time uh, of the border uh, passing. And also, like I said before, it can be used with e-gates. So if you go to an airport that has that, you only put your, your passport uh, there, it will read your data, you will go, and uh, a camera will uh, see that it's you, and you will pass to the e-gate e more quickly. Okay, will a camera be used, um, we introduce here locally as well, to take a shot of the traveler? No. So, so uh, we, we have in, in the new system, uh, there will be a live uh, camera that will take your, your picture and it can be used like that. So in the, in the future, uh, people can, can uh, take their uh, photos as now or they can use the, the camera that uh, we have. Okay, wonderful. And in terms of um, the friendliness of the whole system, it, it certainly sounds um, very much so that it is something that the, the general public need not be flustered about. Uh, Mr. Lake, some persons, of course, would wonder about the validity of their machine-readable passport, which is, which is not due for renewal as yet. Um, how will the two systems run okay. alongside each other? The introduction of the new e-passport does not mean that your present machine-readable passport is not valid. Persons who have had passports issued in the last few weeks, or even on Friday of last week, your passport is valid until its expiration date. Take it into account, some countries require six months in advance. So six months from your expiry date of your present machine-readable passport, it is valid. This is not a call to ask persons to come and change the present valid machine-readable passport to get a new e-passport. Your e-passport is valid. What is not going to happen is when that present machine-readable passport expires, you will not be issued a machine-readable passport. You have no choice but to migrate to the new e-passport. So this is actually phasing out of the machine-readable passport and going to the new e-passport. That's the easiest way to get it done. So put the questions persons have, don't come and change your passport now. Travel with it, it is still valid. Six months before it expires, get a new one. Good to go. Okay. I trust that persons who are holders of the uh, machine-readable passports now feel more at ease, more relaxed, yeah. that the, the, uh, the passport is still passport valid. Is still valid. It's, yes, not, it's it not obsolete. It's just that new, new applicants will be the first to receive the e-passports. Um, we aim to go live on July 25th, 2002. Um, I will have you explain that in detail, Mr. Lake, but then first I will go to Kathleen so he can speak to our state of readiness leading up to hopefully the 25th of July. So uh, for now I don't see any major hiccups, so I think uh, the go live uh, will be on the 25th. So. On the 25th, we will be able to, to provide uh, new passports to the solution citizens. So what are some of the processes that are um, ongoing now leading up to, to this? 
So uh, we are preparing uh, our server in the data centers. We are preparing the new passport office with new equipment, uh, state-of-the-art equipment, uh, new workstations, new monitors, uh, new cameras, new printers, new scanners. So everything, uh, everything will be will be new. Uh, the workflow will be uh, almost uh, almost the same, uh, but I think the speed uh, will will increase. In, in order for the processing uh, of applications and uh, uh, the back end uh, part of it, data quality and uh, and so on. So it will be uh, an improved uh, system Is altogether. There, yeah. Okay. Was there any need to uh, undertake some training of the staff? Uh, yes, uh, training of the staff will uh, will commence uh, next week. So we, we have uh, trainers from the Canadian banknote uh, coming on island and uh, will train all the, all the operators on how to uh, handle uh, the, new, the new application. Okay. Mr. Lee? What it is, and the difference with this one will be the, the ability to submit your passport application forms online. Now, persons, I've said it before, and persons ask the question, unless the system is up and running, we cannot give information for the online portal to work in that regard. The interesting thing about this, this new process going forward, in the event of persons who are renewing their passports, you come in if your application form, which is loaded into the scanner, it is scanned, the documents are handed to you, you sign off, where a screen would show the documents which have been submitted. Mm -hmm. In cases when there are further investigations to do, or you have interviews, your documents will be retained. But a normal application with no changes to it, you submit to at reception, it is scanned, handed to you, you sign off for receiving it, and you move on. That's the speed in which we intend to happen. And like Kathleen said, the back end, there, everything has changed and it has met the requirements going forward if all the, which technology has to offer. So the process should be quicker in that regard. The only hiccups we may see if persons come with documents that need rectifying or changing who would have had these issues before. The new system will not mean that it changes the process of applying for the passport. It means the speed at which the operators will accept and produce that passport. That's the only thing going forward in that regard. And then again, uh, the ability for the passport office to take pictures that is back on roll again. And sometimes persons would know they have issues going to various shops to get pictures taken. And you get the issue if the passport office saying the passport pictures do not meet the requirements. Um, customers have the ability to get passport pictures taken at the office. So, so we're in a yeah. better position. Mm -hmm. So that it's because of this process, we were able to address some, some shortfalls that were existing and further increase the capacity of the passport yes. office. Yes, very much so. Okay, good. Um, let us, well, we are talking about increased efficiency, we're talking about speed, and we have, say, a, a bumper summer probably mm -hmm. ahead of us. Um, so we will look into the implications of that as the world is traveling again mm -hmm. after the break. Okay. She's been watching, waiting, wondering when the sands of time will give way to a tide of change and for yesterday and today to become a new tomorrow. For a time when her son can kiss the cheeks of your loved one and her stars can twinkle in her honeymoon skies. When her earthly embrace will reassure and calm your soul. And her unique view can change your whole perspective. Proudly, she has risen to meet new challenges and to provide safe harbor to all who reach her shores. For her hopes and dreams still stand shoulder to shoulder a precious reminder of experiences yet to come. So wherever your moments and memories take you, let her sense of adventure set you free. She is Saint Lucia.
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I am Claudia Monlui and we are discussing St. Lucia's imminent migration to the e-passport system. Mr. Lake, I alluded to what might be or can be anticipated to be a bumper summer mm -hmm. um, upcoming as post-COVID or with the decrease in, in um, the impact of COVID, persons are traveling again after almost two years of not being able mm -hmm. to do so. And we are going live on the 25th of July, which is right, you could say, in the heart of the, the, the summertime, um, our time when we receive a large number of visitors. Uh, what is the plan? How do we foresee handling this? There will be a bit of a cutoff period in, in that regard. Um, the two systems cannot work you out simultaneously. You can be printing the old merchant readable passports and print the new passports. There will be a cutoff period. The intention is not to disrupt staff in any way at all. To, uh, not staff, uh, members of the public come in with their request for passports. We expect a lot of persons to come in, but with the, with the new system, with the training going on next week and the system coming live, I have no doubt that the staff will be able to handle it. It's just the number of persons who will be wanting to come in in that regard. But a cutoff period where you stop issuing the machine readable ones to move into the new e passport. That is the only little hiccup where we have to manage it to ensure that persons who need to travel and you get a request for emergencies and all of it. We open that during that transition period that we have the emergencies where persons would not have the ability to travel. So this is what a lot of time will be spent in managing to ensuring that persons who have to can and everybody else will wait until they get a brand spanking e-passport. And uh, quite so, um, noting that a number of persons have been patiently waiting, they've been on hold. Yes. That has been managed as well. Um, whereas I can't speak too much for the immigration department and what they have in hand in relation to the amount of passports, there, is a, there has to be a migration period where you move away from one into the other. So before the end of the week, we will have discussions with the immigration department to see exactly where they are with that. And then we can report or give some more information as deemed necessary. Okay. Interestingly enough, when we go live, our domestic population will not um, as yet be in possession of the new e-passport. But I would imagine, of course, international and regional um, travelers whose oh, country yes. have already introduced um, this document would have it and would provide us the opportunity to, to process it and perhaps monitor and evaluate. Yes, the new border management system we have launched is able to read e-passports as well as machine readable passports. So it's not an issue. We are ready. The, once this goes live, we are ready to receive the multitude coming in to enjoy our carnival activities. We're ready for it. I have no doubt that we can handle that volume of traffic coming in. A significant amount of work has gone through this project. Oh, yes. This project has been on, this project could have gone live uh, at least two years ago, but the COVID had some issues, especially with no movements from CBN and their persons, and shipping lines had stopped. Not all the equipment was received during that time factor, so it pushed back all we had to do, which brings us to this stage now. Um, initially, the discussion was to go live in August, but the pushback was let's see how soon we can get it because of the weight of persons. The world, as you said, is opening now for persons to travel. So we're able to work out to go live the 25th of July and that's just around the corner. Okay, let us now address the touchy issue of the cost of the passport. Um, it's a policy decision taken that the price of the passport be at $250. There was no malice or anything in that regard. It was migration from one system into the other because of the issues we were having with our present system. A number of persons have come out and asked a myriad of questions, which we are going to address with CBN as we are going through the process. But with all the new technologies and all what is going on, there is a definite increase in all aspects of passport production. 
we don't have any of these resources that are available around the corner. There are specialized equipment that have to be brought in and installed, which comes at a cost. I'm, I am not sure, I'm, I'm, I'm not so much sure, I don't know that the government is making any large amount of money or any money in it. The intent is to ensure that we rank up there where it pertains to the 70% of the world who have gone through to e-passports and we maintain the credibility of our St. Lucia passport in going forward that we will no longer be questioned at any points. And Captain spoke about the public key infrastructure or the public key directory, which is a key point in showing that we are compliant as far as IKO mandates with passport production. So it is just to ensure that the population or St. Lucians in general who are entitled to passports get a state-of-the-art document accepted worldwide and allows international travel. And um, as you said, we are not isolated in this. The um, international research shows that um, counterfeiters and fraudsters um, kind of have the passport as the document of choice for tampering and um, other illegal activities. And so as they themselves upgrade um, in their, their unlawful business, then I would imagine that organizations um, such as the International Civil Aviation Organization would want to have a response as well so that they could ward off and minimize the impact of scammers and fraudsters. Oh, yeah. Um, and like Kathleen said, from the time when the password is being created and printed, the, the, the chip is encoded and it's sealed. And the in information we have had at Trade and All, any tampering at all to that aspect of it will warrant the password invalid. So once you go through a passport reader at any of the borders, the two will not match. It will prove that it is no longer valid, has been tampered with. And right there again, right then, then the authorities can take action against whoever has that password in their, in their possession. It's a it's tamp. Whereas person will see you can beat anything at some point in time. As it stands right now, any tampering will warrant the travel document invalid. And then scanned by any border management system, it would pick up the authenticity or see that there have been trials in it in that regard. So but, satisfied. Yeah, but Catalin, how, how would you advise um, the holder of an e-passport to handle it in terms of um, exposure to perhaps water, liquids, um, what could damage it? Can they, can they um, scan it? Can they scan it on their own or take a, uh, put it in the photocopying machine and not compromise any of its features? They, they will handle uh, the, the new passport as the old one with the, the, same, uh, the same care. Uh, the, the, the thing is that now it bears also a microchip, but it cannot be easily alterated. So the the passports, the blanks, went uh, to hard and thorough quality checks and testing. So uh, four hours and hours and uh, different temperatures. So they are they are pretty tough. Uh, but basically, handle the uh, the new passport as the one, uh, okay. as the as the old one with with a bit of uh, of care, even okay. if they are like uh, very very tough. Okay, so very tough passports handled with care, but it is also a resilient document. Okay. Yes. Yes. How many um, passports came um, are expected on island, Mr. Lake, overall, the brand new passports? We expect uh, 174,000 passports mm -hmm. in the first world. We wouldn't, we, we, the intent is not to get all the passports done at once. If there are any upgrades to the laminate or any upgrades that IKEA would put forward, we get the passports incrementally for production, and as that warrants, we draw down on what we have. So the, the, the whole gamut of passports will not be in Sanusha, but will be with Canadian Bank on upon request, we get passports sent in for printing. Okay, and will the, the printing be done here on island? Everything is done here. What CBN is doing is actually installing, as was previously done with the, hand, the machine readable passports, all equipment pertaining to passport production is being installed. We is out with the old and in with the new. Mm -hmm. And the new brand spanking part of it, which we can boast about now, we have state of the art. Okay. Um, 
We're about to conclude our very informative um, discussion. And I would now like to invite you to make some parting comments mm -hmm. and then followed by Kathleen. Okay, Senusha, we are coming out of the new e-passport. There is no rush to change your present passport. If your passport is expired and you can hold on until the 25th when we go live, come in and get it done. Persons with emergencies will still need to speak to the immigration department. At this point in time, there is no need to change your passport if it is valid for a six-month period. When we go live on the 25th of July, then and thereafter you can come and apply for your passports and open up for world travel as it is. This is not an intent to force anybody to anything at this point in time, but to ensure we have a secure document which meets what the world requires now for all our solution travelers. Okay, and perhaps we can quickly touch on the persons who have the 10-year visa um, because our passport um, is for, for five years. For five as it years. goes in right now, as you do with your present machine-readable passport, there is no need to change your visa from one passport to the other. I have two passports, one if a visa and the current passport. So the same would put in, you have your new machine, your e-passport, and your old passport if your visa, be it US, Canadian, French, whichever visa you have, you travel with two passports. The, we don't have the authority in Central to transfer passports from one passport to the other. Travel with the two. In, in, travel means that you need a passport for entry to the country, and a visa lets the immigration process take place. So you travel with your two passports. And Kathleen, who has been taking care of the back end of things. So as, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm here uh, on the island with my, my team to make sure that everything will, uh, will go according to plan. And uh, you will have uh, a passport office equipped with, with state-of-the-art uh, technology. And you will have a new brand uh, e-passport. Uh, secured as uh, ever and uh, with a very uh, nice new new design so from the week of the 25th uh, you you will see okay thank you so much for shedding so much light on this issue I think that it has been a very comprehensive and productive discussion and has definitely provided the public with a new or fresh perspective on what the e-passport initiative is all about. From here at the studios of the Government Information Service, I am Claudia mon -Louis. This has been Issues and Answers. Saying goodbye.